What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you 10 more tips and tricks for the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2022. Now, in case you're new to this phone or just Android phones in general, I definitely recommend checking out my beginner's guide and other tips and tricks video for this phone as well. And before we go any further, I do want to remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps with the channel a lot. But with that being said, let's get started. So the first thing I want to show you is a feature called Quick Capture. This is basically yet another shortcut for the camera. Now in the last tips and tricks video, we talked about how you can get to the camera simply by double tapping the power key. But with the Quick Capture feature, we get yet another way to get to the camera. Now this feature is active by default, but in case it's not active on your phone, basically what you're going to do to turn it on is go to settings. From here, go all the way down to system. And from this menu, go to gestures. And quick capture is going to be right down here. So as you can see, again, this feature is on by default. But if for whatever reason it's not working on your phone, be sure to go here and make sure that it's actually on. But essentially, with quick capture, all you need to do to turn on your camera, no matter what you're doing on your phone, is go like this. And as you can see, the camera opened right up. And you can do this from anywhere, so if you're on an app or something like that, and you want to open your camera quickly, as you can see, you can do it while you're on an app, and even when your display is locked. So quick capture is definitely a really useful feature, and in general, it's nice to get so many options to open the camera with this phone. The next thing I'm going to show you is some different options you have for the color settings with your display. So to get to these color settings, you're going to go to settings, from here, go to display, go to advanced, and colors is right here. As you can see, by default, the colors are going to be set to saturated, and this basically means they're going to be brighter and more bold. But if you want, you can change it to natural, and this is going to make them a little bit less intense. If you want, you can also change the temperature of the color as well. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to manage your storage. Now at 128 gigabytes, this phone definitely has a good amount of internal storage, which can be really useful, especially for power users, if you have lots of apps, photos and videos and that sort of thing. But sometimes your storage might get a little full. And even if it doesn't, you still might want to check it every now and then just to make sure you don't have any junk on your phone. So to get to the storage section, we're going to go to settings. From here, go to storage. And as you can see, right away, it's going to tell us how much space is being used and what percentage of the total storage that space is. Not only that, but it's also going to give you a rundown of what's taking up space on your phone. So as you can see, the system is actually taking up most of the space at 21 gigabytes. Then we got other apps, 7.3 gigabytes, games, 4.6, and the rest is pretty much negligible. But if your storage is really starting to get full and you want to see what you can do about getting rid of junk files, what you can do is go to manage storage right here. This is going to take you to the file manager and it's going to help you do things like get rid of duplicates, clean out junk files and stuff like that to free up more space on your phone. Now, believe it or not, apps on phones do actually make some temporary files just like programs on computers. So over time, if you're using larger apps, especially if you're doing something like video editing or maybe gaming, temporary files are going to start to accumulate on your phone and they can end up filling up a lot of space. In addition to this, messages also fill up space on your phone, especially if you're sending photos and videos and stuff like that. So I definitely recommend keeping all this in mind and checking your files regularly just to make sure your phone's not filling up with junk. The next thing I'm going to show you is a feature called Power Touch. Now in the last tips and tricks video, we already went over what you can do by double pressing your power key, but now we're going to talk about what we can do when you double tap it instead. Now by that, I mean literally instead of pressing your power key, just tapping it like this. And believe it or not, we can actually make it do something. So to activate this feature, we're going to go to settings. From here, go down to system. From here, go to gestures. And finally, you're going to want to go to power touch. As you can see, by default, this feature is not on, but we can turn it on. And once it's activated, if we double tap the power key one more time, it's going to open this little menu right here. Now, this is actually similar to what shows up when you take out the stylus. So if we do that, 
This menu is gonna show up. Now it's similar, it looks kind of the same, but it's really not. There are completely different things in this menu, but we will be going over what you can do with the stylus in another video. But essentially with power touch on, it allows you to create a shortcut bar just by double tapping the power key. And remember, you're not pressing this because if we press it, remember, it's gonna open the camera. Or if you're just using the default setting, it'll open the assistant. So as you can see right now, this menu consists of basically composing an email, opening YouTube, opening the calendar, opening the clock, opening Google Maps, and opening the calculator. And as you can see, it doesn't stay up there forever. It's really only a few seconds. So if we double tap the power key and then just leave it up here, it's going to automatically go away just after a few seconds probably a good thing because if you accidentally open it, it'll prevent that menu from being on your screen and in the way. Now you can also customize these shortcuts, of course. As you can see, these are the default things you can do, but you can also add all kinds of different things. You can open pretty much any app on your phone. You can also use different tools like the calculator and that kind of stuff. And you can add shortcuts to contacts as well. Now keep in mind, this menu only has six items on it. And you can't change that, so you can't have more than that. You can only have up to six. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is a quick way to activate your assistant. Now honestly, my favorite way to do this is just to use voice commands. But if you don't want to do that, which I understand, sometimes they're not the most reliable, there is another way. Now by default, you can actually activate the assistant by double pressing the power key. But like we talked about a little earlier, we did change that on this phone to the camera instead, which I personally think is a lot more useful. So without the voice commands, you might be wondering, how else can we activate the assistant? It's actually really simple. All you need to do is swipe your finger up diagonally from this little corner right here, and it's going to open up the assistant. And you can do it from the other corner as well. So that really just goes to show that with this phone, there's not only a shortcut for almost anything, but certain functions actually have multiple shortcuts to choose from. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is how to activate split screen mode. Now I myself, I'm really not a big fan of this feature, so I don't really talk about it a lot, but I know a lot of people really like to use it. And in some situations, I can see how it can be useful. So let's take a look at how we can activate it on this phone. So by default, split screen is disabled. So what you're going to want to do is go to settings. From here, go to system. From here, go to gestures. And from this menu, go to swipe to split. Toggle this feature on. So now with this feature active, all you need to do to activate split screen is go like this. And as you can see, split screen is on and you can choose whatever other app you want to use. Now, as you can see, not every app does support split screen. So again, that's really just why I'm not a very big fan of this feature. There are lots of really popular apps like Instagram and stuff like that, for example, that don't support it. And it's kind of a pain to activate. But if you do like the feature, of course, it is there for you to use. Once again, all you need to do to activate it is go like this. The next thing I'm going to show you is a feature called prevent ringing. This is basically a quick way to get your phone into either vibrate or mute. Now to use this feature, all you need to do is press the power key and the volume up key at the same time like this. And as you can see, it's going to go into vibrate mode, but you might be wondering what if you want to use mute instead of vibrate? Well, all you need to do is go to settings. From here, go to system. From here, go to gestures. And prevent ringing is right here. As you can see, by default, it is on vibrate, but we can also change it to mute. So now if you hit the buttons one more time, as you can see, the phone is going to be in mute instead. And if you want, you can also turn the feature off so it doesn't do anything at all. The next thing I'm going to show you is how you can customize your quick menu. Now you've probably noticed me using this menu throughout the video when I go to settings, but just in case you missed it, to get to your quick menu, you swipe down twice like this. And this is basically it. As you can see, there's a settings icon right here. Just in case you don't feel like using the settings app, it does basically the same thing. But essentially, the quick menu is going to have not only your controls for the brightness, but also some really useful shortcuts as well. So to customize this, all you need to do is hit this icon right here. And as you can see, all this is going to show up. This is basically what's on your quick menu. And this is what you can add to it. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to create a screen recording. This is really easy, not quite as easy as a screenshot, but it's still just as simple. So all you need to do is open your quick menu one more time. 
and find the screen recording icon. By default, it's gonna be somewhere on here. So for me, it's in the second page, but just keep in mind, it might be different for your phone. But now you're gonna to wanna to hit start. There's gonna be a little countdown. And now we're recording the screen. If you hit this menu right here, there are also some options you can customize. You can record sound, you can record yourself, and you can draw on the screen as well. Once you wanna stop, go ahead and hit stop, and it's gonna be saved to your photos. Now the last thing I'm gonna show you is how you can customize your home settings. Now we talked about this menu back in the beginner's guide for this phone, but basically to get to it, all you need to do is press and hold a finger on the home screen like this, and this is gonna show up. So now we're gonna to go to home settings right here, and here we got some other options we can change for the home screen. So the first thing is notification dots, and this is basically gonna take you to the notification menu. By notification dots, they basically mean the bubbles, which is basically these floating icons for conversations, like your messages, Facebook Messenger, stuff like that. You can change the icon size, home screen style. So basically by default, there's gonna be an app drawer, but you can get rid of the app drawer and have everything on the home screen itself. Allow home screen rotation. So if you have auto rotate on, you can have the home screen turn sideways. Swipe access for the news feed and app label. This is interesting. You can actually get rid of the names under the apps. So if we hit don't show and then go back to the home screen, there are gonna be no names for the apps anymore. This can be cool. It makes it look a little bit cleaner and more unique. And if you're really familiar with your apps anyway, you're probably not gonna need labels at all. But those were 10 more tips and tricks for the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2022. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found these tips and tricks useful as well. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna learn more about the phone, again, be sure to check out my beginner's guide and other tips and tricks videos as well. But that's it for this video. As always, I will see you in the next one.